Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time to to rock the world. That's a bar. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden, and today we are going to be going over the top 60, 60 cars that you can buy for dirt cheap. The reason why we're doing this is because we recently hit 60,000 subscribers, and every time I reach a 10,000 subscriber milestone, I make that number in cars. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if we ever reach like 200,000 subscribers, I'm probably not going to do a top 200 video, so just let's make that very clear, but we are going to do the top 60 one. Uh, for anybody that watches this channel frequently, it's not going to be like normal top 10s, obviously, because I don't want to make you guys watch literally an hour long video so we're only going to be talking about each car for around 30 seconds each car is only going to get one background clip in the back and there's not going to be a picture of the engine but i will put on the screen like what it says on the engine uh, we're just going to go brief overview quick rapid fire style 60 cars mostly every single one of these cars is under ten thousand dollars and the majority of them are, i would say probably 40 of them are under five thousand dollars to make that very clear uh really quick guys over 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so if you would please hit that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. And on top of that, in the, in the top of the description is going to be a link to my other channel. Whole lot of self promo going on here. <laughs> the top of the is going to be a link to my other channel where I go over Grand Theft Auto Online content. So if you like Grand Theft Auto Online and you want to go support that, I'd really appreciate it. But with further, without further ado, let's get right into the video with number 60. All right, so coming in at number 60 is going to the Chevy Corvette C three the car gets technically last place but it's still on the list so it still counts it comes with a 5.7 liter v8 making 190 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive now the reason why it's all the way down here at the bottom of the list is there's really nothing to the car that's really good about it the engine isn't that great doesn't make that much horsepower but it's just a cool looking car it's a corvette it's a c3 corvette and i will be honest with you though if you're getting one of these for under 10k it's probably gonna have some issues Coming in at the 59 spot is going to the Toyota Teleca, Teleca, Toyota Celica GT 7th generation, which is the newest one, the one that everybody knows and loves. This car comes with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 170 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. Despite being a Toyota, these cars are actually not as reliable as you think, so definitely be careful if you're buying a Celica as like a daily driver. Might not be the best Toyota to buy as a daily driver, but either way, they just look cool. They can be pretty fun, and it's just a nice little sports car. Next up at the number 58 spot is going to the Volkswagen Beetle Classic. Not the new Beetle, not the really new Beetle, the classic one. Yes, you can find these under 10K. I don't know how, but you can. They come with a 1.6 liter flat four, making only 58 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. Obviously, if you're buying a Volkswagen, old Volkswagen Beetle, though, I don't think you're really going for horsepower, so that should be fine. Just enjoy it for what it is. It's a retro old car that has a lot of history to it, and you're going to have a blast driving it. Now, I will say, it's, once again, not a great like daily driver, but it's just a cool little car. Coming in at the 57 spot now is going to the Volvo 240 one of the cult classics these cars that everybody loves i feel like and for good reason they're a good car they come with a 2.4 liter inline four making 114 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive first rear wheel drive car up this list actually no it's not the corvette was the first rear wheel drive car of this list but either way first little like thrashing drift car if you want a volvo 240 that's great they're good cars but i would recommend just buying it for like a little beater they're just perfect beaters they're reliable as hell they're tanks of the cars Coming in at 56 is going to the Subaru BRZ. Obviously, the first generation, you're not buying a new BRZ under 10K, and you're not buying a new BRZ under like 30K right now, which is stupid. But the old BRZs, so they come with a two liter flat four, making 200 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. Yes, they're not as fast as, you know, some other cars on this list. I will be the first to say it. And on top of that, the reason why it's so low on the list is because it is going to be very hard to find them under 10K, but you can find like a salvage title one sitting under 10K all day. And if you get it, I mean, it's still a fun car. It's like a Miata. Coming in at the number 55 spot is going to a little bit of a cheat code with any street bike. Some people got like mad at me for using street bikes in one of my lists. I don't care. It's only, I'm not like saying like, oh yeah, Yamaha R1. And then like, this is the only entrance where there's going to be a street bike. So just, you know, deal with it, man. They're a good vehicle to, to buy under 10K. They come with usually with 600cc to 1200cc motors. And they make around 100 horsepower to 200 horsepower, obviously, depending on which one you get. Uh, I would obviously not recommend this as a first vehicle. Make sure you're smart when riding a street bike. I do not want to see you dead, man. Coming in at 54 is going to yet another one of the cult following vehicles with the Saab 900. I made a whole video all about Saab, and so now I have a bunch of Saab 900 boys on this page. So, hello guys. I love you. Uh, they come with a 2 liter inline 4, making 131 horsepower, and they are front wheel drive. They're not the fastest cars out there. They're not the prettiest cars out there. They're not the most luxurious cars out there. But there's just something about a Saab 900. Like, it looks like a Beetle, and it's just so different. 
it, it, everything about a sob is just different and I, I can absolutely respect that it's definitely for a certain type of person though not everybody's gonna love a sob 900 Coming in at number 53 is going to the Mini Cooper S, uh, specifically the R53, I think is what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's R53. But either way, it's, you know, the Mini Cooper S. They come with a 1.6 liter supercharged inline four, making 208 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. These cars are stupidly underrated, but they're also stupidly unreliable. So keep that in mind. They're not a great daily driver, even though they may seem like one. They're not. But they are sitting under like, honestly, $3,000 all day. So if you do want a very, very cheap platform to get yourself into, this is a good option. Coming in at the 52nd spot is going to the Subaru Forester 1st Gen or 2nd Gen. Either one of them are under 5K all day, and either one of them are pretty good options. They both pretty much come with the exact same motor too, a 2.5 liter flat four, making 165 horsepower, and they are all-wheel drive, of course, because they are a Subaru. And I freaking love the Foresters. I mean, I feel like everybody on this channel knows that I love Foresters, but I don't think a lot of people talk about them enough. So they are always going to be here on my top 10 list. So just, just be wary of that. Coming in at the 51st spot is going to the wonderful Cadillac Escalade second generation. The only reason why I say second generation over first generation is because first gen was only made for like one year, so it's actually really hard to find the first gens. So go with the second gen. They come with a 5.3 liter V8, making 325 horsepower, and they are 4x4. Now, obviously, that may sound like an insane deal, like that's a lot of horsepower, it's a big motor, but they're also huge vehicles but these are just for the person who's in high school and wants a cheap car that can cruise around your, with your friends in and you can still like be luxurious like can you believe that these things are under five thousand dollars nowadays unbelievable deal coming in at the number 50 spot is going to the audi tt first generation you actually can find a second generation audi tt under 10k nowadays but i'm just going to use the first gen because i kind of like them a little bit better to be honest uh, they come with a 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four making one 237 horsepower and they are all wheel drive of course they're an Audi. Every Audi's all-wheel drive. Actually, I think, didn't some Audi TTs come as front-wheel drive? I could be wrong about that, but either way, those, these ones are all-wheel drive, and they're just these cool little, fun little track cars. They're definitely underrated as hell, too. By the way, nobody talks about Audi TTs, and they just barely squeeze into the top 50 in my list. Coming in at the number 49 spot might anger a couple of people that it's not higher on the list, but it is the Mazda Miata, specifically the NA or the NB. They are amazing cars, but I really don't think that they deserve the hype that they get. They come with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 135 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. That is very slow. Like the, the, the jokes about Miatas being slow are true. You're not gonna, you're like my PT Cruiser is faster than a Miata, so. But they are also very fun to drive around corners. So if you are into the cornering, like race racing, like that style of racing, then these are for you. But if you're not, then they're an absolutely horrible choice for you. Coming in at the number 48 spot is going to the BMW 325i E30. I love E30s, but they're getting a little bit overpriced now, and I really just don't see a point in buying an E30 at the price that they're at, sadly. Uh, they come with a 2.5 liter inline six, making 160 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. That's obviously not that quick, but these cars are obviously pretty old. Uh, they are, since they are old, they're also gonna be pretty unreliable and have expensive maintenance to do on them but they do look really cool. They are super fun to drive and they are just like a blast from the past and you'll only make money on an E30. The prices are only gonna go up. Coming in at number 37 is actually another car that the prices are only gonna continue to go up on, the Mazda RX-7 FC. These, these cars are obviously incredibly unreliable because of their motor, but they're fun cars, okay? They come with a 1.3 liter two rotor rotary engine making 160 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. They are in my opinion beautiful looking cars but the problem is for cheap it's going to be hard to find one that's like actually running and driving and worth your money there are so many fc rx7 project cars out there and just be careful if you decide to go pick one of these up Coming in at number 46 is a car that I'm definitely going to have to explain myself a little bit with, the Mercedes SL600. Yes, these cars are under 10k, but they're right under the 10k mark. It's very hard to find them under 10k. And on top of that, they're not as good of a deal as you would think. They come with a 6 liter V12, making 389 horsepower, and they are rear wheel drive, which is obviously super cool for the guy who literally only cares about going fast. That's insane amount of horsepower. But they are not going to be a bargain if you buy them. That's the issue. Like, yes, you might be able to buy them for a bargain, but after that, everything else is going to be stupid expensive. It's a V12 Mercedes. Like, be ready to empty your pockets. Coming in at the number 45 spot is going to the Toyota MR2 SW20. This car, I, I love the MR2 SW20, but once again, they sadly get a pretty bad rep for being hard to drive. 
and it makes sense. They come with a 2.2 liter inline four making 130 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive, but they are mid engine. So the engine's behind you. And so due to that, it, they do experience a lot of snap oversteer. So if you're a new driver or something like that, and you're not too experienced with driving cars hard, then an SR SW20 MR2 is definitely not for you. Coming in at the number 44 spot is going to the Ford Ranger, pal. The first truck of this list, technically, unless you count the Cadillac Escalator truck, and it is an absolutely amazing one. There's really nothing wrong with it. They come with a 4-liter V6, making 190 horsepower, and they are 4x4, meaning that you actually can keep it in your rear-wheel drive and drift a Ford Ranger if you wanted to, which is pretty cool, but I would recommend lifting it and using it as an off-road machine. They're incredibly reliable, good on gas, not the most comfortable, and definitely not the fastest out there. But, and they're not like the coolest either, they're not gonna like turn heads, but they're just a really reliable, fun little car. Truck, I guess. Coming in at the number 43 spot is going to the Honda Prelude 5th generation. Uh, you can also get a 4th gen, and you can also get a 3rd gen for under 10k, but I'm gonna use the 5th gen because I kinda just, I think they're just so beautiful. They come with a 2.2 liter inline 4, making 195 horsepower, and they are front wheel drive. This is actually one of the quicker Hondas on this list, surprisingly, because Hondas don't have a lot of horsepower stock, but they kinda like shine when it comes to the modding scene, but I just love the looks of the Prelude. They're reliable, good on gas, beautiful little cars. Coming in at the number 42 spot is going to the Porsche. 944 these cars man how, how do i how do i even start people love the porsche 944 and like if you say anything about them they freaking hate you for it they come with a three liter inline four making 211 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive that's obviously an incredible car it's obviously a really good motor too for the car the issue is just that these porsche 944s for under 10k are gonna have issues and they're not gonna it's kind of like the mercedes we talked about before it's not gonna be it's gonna be cheap to buy it but it's not gonna be cheap to maintain it and that's kind of a, a big debbie downer and barely squeezing its way into the top 40 is the Audi A5 AT. I actually really love the A5 ATs. I want one. I wanted one before I got the Integra, actually, but they're just a little bit too high in price for me right now. But they come with a 3.2 liter V6, making 265 horsepower, and they are all-wheel drive. They also do come with a 1.8 liter turbocharged motor, but that one's incredibly unreliable and is a lot less horsepower. So I'm going to use the V6 and they're just like these kind of like they're they're like fake it till you make it kind of cars. They're not like the super fastest. They're not the super fanciest, but they're just a good combination of everything. Coming in at the number 39 spot is going to the Lexus SC300. This is obviously not going to be the only time that we see Lexus on this list. They make a lot of appearances, but this one comes with a three liter inline six making 225 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. I love the SCs. I think... Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I think everybody on this channel knows how much I love the SCs. They're amazing little fun little cars. And for what they are, for the price that they are, they're an incredible deal. On top of that, the motor that's in them is a 2JZ. Not the 2JZ, but a 2JZ. And uh, it's a pretty reliable, pretty good on power motor. And I, it's, it's, it's a good car. Coming in at the number 38 spot is going to the Dodge Neon SRT4. My friend used to have one of these and by golly gosh, googly moogly. These are some fun cars. Let me tell you right off the bat, compadre. They come with a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four that makes 230 horsepower and they are front wheel drive. And yes, they may look like a Beetle. And yes, they may share the same motor that's in a PT Cruiser, but they are fun, okay? They are fun. If you're looking for just a strictly fun car, you're in the right place. Go to the Dodge dealership. Not actually, go to Facebook Marketplace, they won't scam you there, but such a good car. Coming in at number 37 is a car that everybody seems to say like is the perfect project car. And it's a good one, but definitely not the perfect one. The BMW 328i E36, absolutely love them. E36 owners are actually smoking crack though. They think that they have like the freaking golden key to car world and it's annoying. They come with a 2.8 liter inline six making 190 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. They're amazing drift cars. They're actually decently reliable too, even for their year. And, uh, they're just a fun little car. However, they're not worth $9,000. So stop asking for $9,000 for your E36. Stupid. Coming in at the 36 spot is going to the second truck of this list. Yes, there's a couple trucks on here. There's a couple, okay? I kept you truck boys in mind. It is a Chevy Silverado 1500 Cat Eye. Uh, these puppies come with a 5.3 liter V8, making 285 horsepower, and they are 4x4s, obviously. Uh, in the truck community, I guess the Cat Eye is like not a special truck at all, and people actually don't like the Cat Eye. But because of that, they're really cheap. So if you want just a truck, you don't really care about what the truck guys think of you, then this is an amazing deal. Honestly, I don't really understand why they don't like them. They look pretty cool to me but yeah there you go coming in at the number 35 spot is going to the toyota supra mark 4 just kidding it's the mark 3 obviously because you're not finding a mark 4 for anything less than five million dollars these mark 3s though come with a three liter inline six making 225 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive once again that is another jay-z motor 
pretty good motor if you want to build power on a Supra but for a budget this is a good one obviously it's not going to be able to make a, as much power as the Mark IV Supra can but it can make a decent amount and it just has that beautiful like retro styling to it I, I, I love the Mark III Supras coming in at the number 34 spot is going to the Volkswagen GTI Mark IV I constantly say that this is like one of the best first tuner cars if you're like a new car guy and I stand by that they come with a 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four making 170 horsepower and they are front wheel drive but that 1.8 T is reliable and can make a lot more power than 170 these things eat up boost they're amazingly good tuner cars and they at first they don't look that good I will be honest but it's very easy to make them look amazing too coming in at the beautiful number 33 spot is going to the Chevy Camaro RS fifth generation yes we are talking about the rs because you're not affording a fifth gen v8 for under 10k but it's still pretty good they come with a 3.5 liter v6 that makes 312 horsepower and it's rear wheel drive now yes it's nowhere near like the 400 horsepower that the ss will make but 300 is still a very good number and i think people constantly sleep on v6 muscle cars because they're afraid of being like made fun of even though they're still a very decent car with a decent motor that makes decent power behind it Coming in at the 32 spot for this list is going to the Honda Civic SI EK. The EK Civic is once again another great tuner car if you're looking to get into the tuner world and they're still pretty damn cheap. They come with a 1.8 liter inline four making 160 horsepower and they are front wheel drive. It's obviously very easy to rice out a Civic so be careful in modifying this thing. Just less is more. Always remember that when you're building a Civic, less is more. Hondas do not need a lot to look good. They need a very little bit and they're perfect. Just barely missing out of the top 30 now is going to the Ford Focus ST at the 31 spot. These hatchbacks get a lot of love nowadays and they kind of deserve it. They come with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four making 252 horsepower and it is front wheel drive. Now, is this the best hatchback in the world out there? I don't think so. They can make a decent amount more horsepower, but for what they are, they're really cheap. Like these cars are pretty new and they're already sitting under the 10K spot. It, that's an incredible deal in my opinion. And just barely squeezing its way into the top 30 is the Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX 2nd Generation or 2G. These cars are literally just pocket Evos and nobody cares about them and it makes literally no sense. They come with a 2 liter turbocharged inline 4 making 210 horsepower and it is all wheel drive. In case you don't know that motor that comes in this car is literally the exact same that they were putting in the evos just a tuned down motor so it literally has everything that you could ask for a 4g63 all-wheel drive it's a pocket evo if you want a pocket evo for less than 10k here you go coming in at the number 29 spot is going to a really new car i don't i i don't give this car enough love on the channel for sure but it is the bmw 328i f30 my friend has one of these and they're actually so luxurious on the inside it's it's, it's amazing they come with a two liter turbocharged inline four making 180 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive or all wheel drive i will be the first to admit a 328i f30 is not the way that you want to go if you want to build power you'd probably rather save for a 335i or something like that but if you just want a cool daily driver that looks good is comfortable to drive and can be fun this is a good option Coming in at the number 28 spot is yet another car that I really don't talk about enough, and I, guess, I bet the Volvo boys are a little bit upset about that, but it is the Volvo S60R. This thing is absolutely insanely good. They come with a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline five, making 300 horsepower on the dot, and it was all wheel drive. Since it's a Volvo, it's also pretty reliable, but since it's a Volvo, it's also pretty hard to find parts for it. So if it does break, which it usually doesn't break, but if it does, you're gonna have a bit of a, bit of a nightmare on your hands, but besides that, it's an amazing car. Coming in at the number 27 spot is Mark losing his voice. Just kidding. It's the Nissan 300ZX Z32. I am starting to lose my voice though. So towards the end of this video, I start to get like raspier. That's why. Either way, this car comes with a 3 liter V6 and making 222 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. The Z32 is in my opinion, the be most beautiful Z car that's ever been built to this day. And I feel like a lot of people kind of agree with me on that. This car is almost like a freaking JDM legend, to be honest. And you can still find them under 10K. You can still find them under 5K and they're just an amazing deal. Coming in at the number 26 spot is going to the Ford Mustang GT SN95. This is the first Mustang on this list, but it will not be the last. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> These freaking cars come with a 4.6 liter V8, making 240 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. By the way, if you're wondering what that noise was, that was Mr. Krabs' laugh. It wasn't my laugh, it was his. But the SN95, also you can get a new edge Mustang for under 5k too if you want. They're both incredible deals. I just like the SN95 a little bit better. But they're just in beautiful cars, fun if you want a cheap V8 to get into in high school, that's going to still be reliable. Here you go. 
Coming in at the 25 spot is yet another car that this channel in particular seems to love, the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. You guys, every time I use the 3000 GT as a thumbnail, you guys click on the video and it's wild. They come with a 3 liter V6 that makes 162 horsepower and it is front wheel drive. Uh, now, yes, the VR4 makes a decent amount more horsepower and I'm, I'm going to be honest, the base model of the 3000 GT is any like any super fast rocket ship of a car, but they literally look like old supercars and you can buy them for under 5k. That's amazing. Coming in at the number 24 spot is one of the most underrated BMWs ever built, the BMW 540i E39. These absolute monsters of BMWs come with a 4 liter V8 making 286 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. They're literally like, when they were made, they were one of the faster cars, fastest sedans out there and they have insane amounts of luxury behind them for their year two and they're dirt cheap because everybody wants E36s and E46s and nobody likes E39s. So if you want a literally 300 horsepower BMW with a V8 underneath the hood, here you go. It's an amazing deal. Coming in at the number 23 spot, however, is going to kind of like the opposite it's kind of like the yin and yang of the E40, E39 we just talked about. The Lexus LS400. These cars were built around the same time and it was a direct competitor for BMW's luxury cars. And this one came with a 4 liter V8 making 270 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. It is one of the best cars out there for under 5k period. I want to make that very clear. The LS400 is ridiculously reliable, decently horse, decent horsepower, really luxurious and cheap as hell to maintain. Perfect car if you're like a high schooler looking for something that's kind of fun. Coming in at the number 22 spot is going to the Audi S4 B7. To be honest, this is the only S4 on this list, but the S4 B6 and S4 B5 are also found under 10K, so those are also good options. But the B7 comes with a 4.2 liter V8, making 344 horsepower, and it was all-wheel drive. By the way, I just thought of this. The S4 B8 is even under 10K, so if you want a B8 S4, you can get that under 10K. But the B7, I just think, is beautiful. It has a V8 in it, which makes really good horsepower, and it can make insane amounts more horsepower, but it is not un is not that reliable, though. I want to make that clear. Just barely missing out of the top 20 is going to the BMW Z3. This car is pretty much for the person who wants a Miata, but also wants to be a little bit comfortable when driving the Miata, because at least it has a little bit of luxury in it. It is the... I, don't, I already told you what it is. It comes with a 3 liter inline 6 making 225 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. They are just an absolute fun canyon carving monster. I see a lot of people drifting these now in the drifting community and that makes sense. They are good drift cars too. They're just a fun little cheap little platform for B from BMW and I think they're a great option. Just barely squeezing its way into the top 20 is going to the Pontiac Firebird first fire Firebird fourth generation. By the way, I want to say before, uh, I don't know why I keep saying you know, these are great options. They're obviously great options, so I'm going to stop saying that. Either way, though, the 4th Gen Firebird comes with a 5.7 liter V8, making 305 horsepower, and it is rear-wheel drive. These cars also come with an LS, so if you want to make a lot more horsepower, that's very easy to do. I, my dad has, like, three of these Firebirds, and they are amazingly fun cars to drive, so definitely pick yourself up one if you're looking to get into a cheap muscle car. Coming in at the 19th location of this list is the Hyundai Genesis Coupe, as we all know. I am a big fan of the old Jenny Coopy. You know, I don't like these cars. They come with a 3.8 liter V6, making 348 horsepower, and they are rear wheel drive. However, I do want to say that they also come with a 2 liter turbocharged inline 4, and if you get the BK1, the horsepower numbers are going to be a little bit li cheaper. So definitely, if you're looking to buy a Hyundai Genesis Coupe, do your research before you buy them so you know exactly which model you're buying with exactly what motor and exactly how much horsepower, because they kind of jump all around. Coming in at the number 18 spot is going to one of the most underrated cars ever built, in my opinion, the Volkswagen Corrado VR6. Since it has the word VR6 in it, that's pretty obvious what kind of motor it comes with. It is a 2.9 liter VR6 that makes 190 horsepower and it is front wheel drive. Everybody kind of like writes this car off as some uh, like a failed Volkswagen sports car project, but it is the kind of the complete opposite. Yes, it looks a little bit weird, but VR6s are one of the best motors Volkswagen's ever built. These cars can make ridiculous power. They can do it reliably. And in my opinion, they actually kind of look pretty cool. So Coming in at the number 17 spot is going to, uh-oh, what's that? My car, buddy, that's right. It is the Acura Integra GSR. However, I actually don't have a GSR, I have an LS. But either way, it's in a GSR Integra. They come with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 170 horsepower, and they are front wheel drive. This car is a perfect option for a high schooler that wants something that's fun around the corners, but can still be fast and has a good motor to build. It's easy to work on. It's reliable as hell, cheap to own, cheap to maintain. Looks pretty decent as long as you do a little bit of work to it and make it look a little bit cooler than it is stock. It, it's it's a, just a good deal all around. Coming in at 16th is probably my most favorite hatchback ever built. 
at least probably my most favorite under 10k for sure it is the mazda speed 3 these cars come with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline 4 making with 263 horsepower and they are front wheel drive by the way these cars were built back in the late 2000s early 2010s and they were making 263 horsepower back then i haven't seen any hatchback making that number anytime soon however this is not the last time we will see a hatchback on this list so keep it uh, keep your hopes up for you hatchback boys Coming in at the 15th spot is going to a car that's actually very hard to find under 10k, but once you do find it under 10k, it is an absolutely steal of a deal. The Pontiac GTO, obviously we're talking about the newer GTOs, they come with a 6 liter V8 making 400 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive. That V8 is also an LS, so if you wanted to get more horsepower out of it, you can. Uh, yes, these are incredibly hard to find under 10k, I want to be the first to say it, but it can be done, and if you, it, even if it has like a bunch of problems, you're literally getting a 400 horsepower LS powered GTO. Coming in at 14th for this list is I think the last, nope it's not, I was about to say it's the last BMW, but it's actually not the last BMW, but it is the BMW 330ci E46, the E46 is such an underrated chassis, it hurts. They come with a 3 liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. Everybody nowadays wants to buy E36s, so the E46 price is like down so much, so if you want like literally a better E36, but for less the price of an E36, buy yourself an E46, they're an absolute great deal. Coming in at 13th, Friday the 13th, Jason murdering with a machete, is the Honda Civic SI 8th generation. I almost bought one of these instead of the Integra. I was literally so close to buying it. But either way, they come with a 2 liter inline 4, making 197 horsepower, and they are front wheel drive. These are also come with a K series motor, actually, so you can make a lot more horsepower if you want to. Uh, they also, in my opinion, the sands look a lot better than the coupes, but either way, they do look really good. They're just good, once again, kind of like the Integra, but just better. Coming in at the 12th position for this video is the Lexus IS300. I told you it would not be the last time we saw a Lexus, my friend. The IS300 is right here. This one comes with a 3 liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. That's actually the exact same motor that we had in the SC300, which is a 2JZ. So yes, you can make decent power out of it, but not as much as, you know, the GTE. Um, and they're just an amazing, good, amazingly good drift car. They're reliable as hell. Sadly, they are a little bit overpriced nowadays, but what are you gonna do about it and just barely missing out of the top 10 of this list is the ford mustang gt s197 i love this car it's an obviously amazing car but it just didn't have a spot in the top 10 and you'll see why when i go into the top 10 this car comes with a 4.6 liter v8 making 300 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive yes sadly you will not be able to get the 5.0 mustang gt s197 like the facelift one for under 10k however the old your pre-facelift one is still a very good deal and if you're looking for a muscle car mustangs never go wrong all right but now we are into the top 10 of this list finally and the number 10 is going to the acura tl third generation and the way that this is going to work is every one of these cars in the top 10 is the best in their certain class so not necessarily the best of all the cars but they're the best in a certain class and the acura tl is in my opinion the best daily driver for under ten thousand dollars they come with a 3.2 liter v6 making 270 horsepower and it is front wheel drive since this is a car guy list obviously this isn't just about daily driver it's about daily driving and having a little bit of fun and the acura tl hits both those spots 270 horsepower is a good amount of horsepower to have a bunch of fun in but it's still an acura with a decent amount of luxury in it and a reliable motor coming in at number nine is going to the dodge ram 1500 fourth generation or you could even get the third generation for under 10k it doesn't really matter but in my opinion these are the best trucks to buy for under ten thousand dollars they come with a 4.7 liter v8 making 310 horsepower and they are four by four obviously they're not a turbo diesel you can find some turbo diesels underneath under the ten thousand dollar range but they're all going to be like the worst of the worst and you probably don't want to do that so i would recommend buying this one staying clean staying safe and they look pretty cool like i'm not a truck guy but these things look nice Coming in at the number 8 spot, however, is going to the Volkswagen GTI Mark VI. I told you, boys, that it was not going to be the last time we saw a hatchback on this list. And this is the best hatchback, which also hits the mark of, like, the best daily driver because hatchbacks are kind of just glorified daily drivers they come with a two liter turbocharged inline four making 210 horsepower and they are front wheel drive now obviously that's not as quick as something like the mazda speed 3 however the luxury inside is so much better the engine's a lot more better and reliable it has more power potential and just it has more space looks better it's a freaking volkswagen gti coming in at the number seven spot however is going to the infinity g37 that's two sevens coupe 
obviously this car is the best like looking slash fake it till you make it kind of car it's like the best if you want to like look rich but when, even when you're not rich uh the g37 coupe is in my opinion the best one for that they come with a 3.7 liter v6 making 330 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive or all wheel drive they are a very fun platform to drive for sure but that's definitely not like their main selling point they're just a good combination of luxury with speed but mainly the looks it's going to turn some heads especially if you modify it and that's what it's here for Coming in at the number six spot, however, is going to the Subaru WRX Blob Eye. This is, I'm sure you could guess it, but this is the best rally car for under $10,000 for all you rally fanboys. I love rally. I'm really starting to get into it more, so just wanted to say that. But either way, they come with a two liter turbocharged flat four, making 225 horsepower, and they are all wheel drive. If you don't like the looks of the Blob Eye, that's okay. You can get a Bug Eye or a Hawk Eye. They're exactly the same car, and they're all under $10,000. Hawk Eyes are a little bit more expensive, though, but either way, same car i just picked the bob eye because i think it looks the best and they are obviously bre bred to be a rally car so they're incredible rally cars all right top five now buddy old pal and number five is going to the jeep wrangler tj hunt this is the best off-road vehicle in my opinion for under ten thousand dollars there's really nothing that holds up against the jeep off-road they come with a four liter inline six making 170 horsepower and they are four by fours they are getting a little bit overpriced because it's a tj wrangler and everybody kind of wants one especially the overlanding guys but either way, I still think they are worth the money. They're just amazing off-road vehicles with tons of aftermarket support for them to make them even better if you want to. Coming in at the number four spot of this list is going to the Acura RSX Type S. It's honestly kind of mind-blowing that a Honda managed to make it into the top five for the 60 best cars of the uh, uh, under 10k but either way this is in my opinion the best tuner car for under ten thousand dollars they come with a 2.4 liter inline four making 200 horsepower and it is front wheel drive that motor is once again another k series which you might you might think like well then why not just get an h gen civic si for under 10k then and you can do that but i just think the rsx looks a little bit cooler has a little bit better like history behind it and it's a little bit lighter so that's why i put it here coming in at third place is going to my car and i'm Try not to be biased here, but I truly believe this is a very good car for under 10K. It is the Nissan 350Z. In my opinion, this is the best drift car for under $10,000, and it's kind of obvious as to why. They come with a 3.5 liter V6, making 306 horsepower, and they are rear wheel drive. On top of that, they have a limited slip differential from factory, meaning that they you don't have to weld the diff or anything like that. And 300 horsepower in a rear wheel drive 350Z is more than enough. You can literally drift a 350Z stock, and it's an amazing platform for it, and that's why I put it here. Coming in at second place, however, I'm guarantee you guys guessed that the, I guarantee you guys guessed the top three because I talk about them all the time on my budgets. But in the second place is a Chevy Corvette, Corvette C5. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the best street car. So if you're looking not for a drag car, but not for a race, like not for like full blown race car, and you just want something that's fun to drive on the streets then this is this is the option for you i think they come with a 5.7 liter v8 making 350 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive they are very hard to find under ten thousand dollars but once you do they're absolutely worth it that motor is also an ls so it can make a lot more horsepower and since it's not something like a muscle car it actually can handle a little bit too so you can do it all you can have fun on the highways have fun on the back roads it looks beautiful so you can go to car shows with it it's good on gas it's reliable it's the best street car but coming in at the first place in my opinion the best car for under ten thousand dollars all around is the bmw 335i e92 it is just absolutely amazing for what it is they come with a three liter twin turbocharged inline six making 300 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive slash all wheel drive you get to pick uh and it, it, it is truly amazing the only thing the only thing that i would say and i will admit is wrong with the 335i e92 is the reliability they come with an n54 the n54 is a very notoriously unreliable motor but if you can work around that everything else is amazing it's luxurious as hell it's fun as hell sounds good great motor to build handles like a dream good in a straight line literally anything you can think of besides reliability this car is good for it. it's cheap everything about it it's just it's a good car but ladies and gentlemen that is the end of today's video of the top 60 best sports cars that you can buy for under ten thousand dollars thank you guys again so much for hitting helping me hit sixty thousand subscribers also i don't know if you noticed but the hat came off the glasses are on at it was a lot of time there's like 30 minutes of talking there a lot of weird things happen back here just want to put that out there my mouth is like the sahara desert right now i am it's so dry my nose feels like it's bunched up with just like i don't even know just bad stuff i'm freaking i'm i, I was <laughs> it's like a day's work right there talking for 30 minutes straight but it was a blast and it actually took like closer to an hour because you know i gotta take breaks and stuff like that but either way thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it this took a lot of work 
if you would hit that like button i'd really really appreciate that guys or maybe even you know just hit the subscribe button either way it's just, just so a little love to the video it'd it help a lot but either way thank you guys so much for watching das have a nice night